we will now look at the distinction between a Mealy and a Mohr graph. So let us first define the Mealy graph. So a Mealy graph is defined by the five tuple M, which consists of I, S, Z, delta and lambda, where delta here is our state transition function. So delta takes as input a state and an input and maps this to a new state. And lambda here is the output function. So lambda takes also as input one of the states and one of the inputs, and then it maps this to an output. The Mealy graph we write in the following way. So we have a state S and when we are in state S and we have the input I, we give the output that is determined by the lambda function, which takes the state S and the I as input, and we go to a new state. And the new state that we go to is determined by our function delta, which also takes the state S as an input and the input I. And this is exactly what we have seen before. So up until now, what we have done in this course is to look at the Mealy graph when we wanted to describe our problem and give the state transition graph for our problem. The Mohr graph, on the other hand, is a little bit different. So let us define this. A Mohr graph is defined also by the five tuple I, S, Z, delta, and here we have the output function that we're going to call beta where delta here is the state transition function so the delta takes as input the state and the input to our system and then it produces a new state beta here which we now call the output function will take as input a state and then it will from this state produce an output so look at the difference here between the Mealy and the more graphs where the Mealy graph had the output function taking input both a state and an input i, while here the output function only depends on the current state. And since the output function only depends on the current state, we typically write these graphs a little bit differently. So what we define here is the state s, and when we leave this state s, we say that we output our beta of s and then the state transition function is the same as for the Mealy graph so when we have the input i we go to the next state which we define by delta which takes an input the current state and the input i so let us see an example of this and we're going to look at our parity check problem which we have seen before so in this problem we want to output a one if the number of ones that we have seen previously is odd and we want to output a zero if the number of ones we have seen previously is even. So here the state S0 will represent the situation where the number of ones that we have observed is even and S1 will represent the situation where the number of ones that we have observed is odd. So as long as we get only zeros as the input, we stay in state S0 and we output a zero because we have still an even number of ones. And when we get a 1 in the input, we have now an odd number of 1s, so we output a 1. And as long as we get 0 on the input, we will output a 1, because we still have an odd number of 1s. If we are in state S1 and we input a 1, then we go back to state S0, because we now go from having seen an odd number of 1s to an even number of 1s, and we output 0 to indicate that we now have an even number of 1s. What we have given here is the Mealy graph for this problem and we can see that it is a Mealy graph because the output will depend on the input. So if we are in S0 and we get a 0 as an input, we will output a 0 and if we get a 1 as an input, we will output a 1. So clearly the output here will depend not only on the state which we are in, but also on the input. So it is a Mealy graph. So let us look at the Mohr graph for the same problem. So in the Mohr graph, our output will only depend on the state that we are in. So here we say that if we are in state S0 and regardless of which input we get, we will output a zero. And if we are in state one, regardless of the input we get, we will always output a one. 
So will this work? Well, let us look at the situation that we have. Assume that we have a zero as input and we start with that situation. So if we are in S zero and we get a zero as input here in the more graph, we will output a zero. That is the same as the situation that we have in the milligraph. If we are in the state S1 and we input a zero, then we also output a one. So that will also be the same as the situation that we have in the milligraph. Now let us instead look at the situation where we input a 1 and we are in the zero state. For the Mealy graph we will output a 1, while for the more graph we will output a 0, since we are in the zero state. So this is a difference between the two different graphs. At the same time, when we input this 1 here, we will know that we go to state S1, so the next time, regardless of our input, we will output this 1 over here. And similarly, when we input this 1 here in the more graph, when we are in state S1, and when we input the 1 here in the Mealy graph, when we are in state 1, we will get a 0 in the Mealy graph, we will get a 1 in the more graph, but we will next time definitely get a zero because we will be in our zero state. So more generally what we can see in our Mealy graph is that every time we enter the state S zero we will output a zero. And every time we enter the state S one we will output a one. So the two graphs will output exactly the same sequence, but the more graph will be one time unit delayed behind the Mealy graph. So using this observation, we can see that it is possible to make a conversion from a Mealy graph to a more graph. What is required is that we accept that if we go from the Mealy graph to the more graph, the output is delayed one step and we might need more states when we write it as a more graph. So in the conversion we split the states such that all entering edges into the state have the same output. And this situation we already had for our parity check example, so we didn't have to do this first step in our conversion for the parity check. And in the second step, we move the output into the state pointed out by the edge. We can also convert our more graphs to Mealy graphs. So all more graphs can be written as Mealy graphs if we allow that the output is affected directly, and in this case it means asynchronously, by the input. So instead of having the output produced when we clock the circuit or when we go to the next state, it will instead, when we go backwards in this conversion, we will move our output to the entering edges, which means that this output is affected immediately before we have a clocking, compared to the more graph that we had. And when we have done this, we use the RF algorithm in order to remove all our equivalent states.